This is Late Night Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. During the next hour, the insane Daryl Wayne and I are going to take a look at a number of issues that reach out and touch each and every one of us. We'll wrap up today talking about attraction. And it's not the attraction between two people. I think it's the attraction between individuals and the universe. We're also going to spend some time with the author of The Tragedy of Heterosexuality and find out what she means about that. You know, if you're straight or gay, we're, most of us are, are heterosexual, but maybe we need to learn some things to accommodate more people. That's at least my take. And we're going to start with something that's a little bit light and a little bit heavy. Joel, Joel, Jill Rosenzweig has written a book called Bailey Bloom and the Battle of the Bug. It is a book for kids to explain why we have COVID-19, why we are in quarantine. An attorney by trade, she's from Montreal, Canada. I've been there several times. We have a lot, a lot in common, more than she knows. Uh, Jill, welcome to Late Night Help. Thank you so much for having me on, Mark. It's great to be here. Uh, your real-life superheroes wouldn't happen to be your kids, would they? <laughs> yes, they would. Uh, they are the reason why I wrote the book, and they're actually characters in the book, which was really fun. Are How old are they? Uh, my son is eight years old, my daughter is five years old, and they actually start school today. <laughs> oh, my. But is that a virtual yes. school, or are they going to be... In a classroom. They are starting school in the very exciting classrooms, also known as the bedrooms. <laughs> so it's a virtual program uh, while their schools are closed. That's, you know, I, I've been thinking about young kids uh, in particular with COVID. I mean, older people like you, She's old, Daryl, you know? <laughs> Doesn't sound like it to me. No, not at all. But <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> people like us, how's that? Like Daryl and myself. Uh, Josh is in the studio as well. Um, we can accept and understand, even though we're going mentally mad, uh, you know, quor being quarantined. But one of the big things, I think, about growing up is playing with your friends, which you clearly illustrate in the book, and and that kids get to play with each other, they hug each other, sometimes they fight with each other, but they do have a relationship. Isn't it much harder now with COVID-19? It's definitely been a challenge, and I think that like most parents, the first thing that I worried about with all of this was really how my kids would react and how it might affect them because, honestly, for me, most of my friendships are over the phone. It's a rarity that I see my friends in person, and I'm okay with that. But for my kids, their friendships are very much a in-person type of thing, and I definitely worried about that when they were home. And the reason why I wrote the book was because it was right after their school closed in March. Uh, they, you know, they went to school and literally that day we got an email saying that they would not be returning the following day. So it was very sudden and it came as a bit of a shock. Um, but I, I do think that so much of why I wrote the book and so much of why my kids are doing okay is just figuring out ways to address what's going on, not hide it from them, and we really focus on what we can do to help people during the pandemic, and I think that's really helped my kids feel like they have a sense of purpose, um, and part of that is also doing those things by talking to their friends and saying, I put up rainbow art in my window, why don't you put up rainbow art in your window too, and now we'll both do it together, and it actually makes the kids feel like they're doing things with their friends 
which has been really helpful to make them feel like they're still connected to their peers. So what am I, that's kind of what, what the book is about, and that's really what we've been doing in real life. I mean, the book is very much a reflection of real life for us. One of my concerns prior to COVID-19 are millennials and a little bit older living on their cell phones, their smartphones. Yeah. Now, I have to yeah. admit... If I walk out of my house without my smartphone, and I do it occasionally, not often, if I'm in my car, I will turn around and come back for it because I'm I'm addicted. Okay. Yeah. I text. You know, I I do Facebook on it. I do all kinds of things. It is an integral part of my life, both personally as well as professionally whether I'm talking to a, a producer or a potential guest for late night help, whatever it might be. One of the concerns that I have is that kids growing up now aren't going to understand interacting with people on a face-to-face -face basis when this damn thing goes away. Yeah. I think that that's a concern for a lot of people, and it's, I think, a valid concern because, for example, my son is eight years old. We figured we would not get him an email account or have him using text messaging until he was at least 12 years old, but when this whole thing happened and he was home, we ended up getting him an email account. He started text messaging his friends because it was really the only way for him to stay connected. And it's kind of a sad reality that the way that kids are connected right now is through their computers. Um, and I, I think a lot of people are concerned with it. But I do think that there are ways to continue to feel engaged with your friends without using devices. So, for example, we bake cookies for my kids' friends and drop them off at their door and left them for them. Or we send cards or pictures in the mail to friends. So I do think that there are ways of staying connected that don't involve computers, and there are lots of things you can do off of the computer. Um, so we did another project where all the kids in my daughter's class made a book together where each kid was responsible for one sentence of the book, and they made a picture. And it was kind of like a build a story where everyone was responsible for one part of it. And then they all got to keep the book and read the book at night. It was like a bedtime story. So I do think you have to get creative with it, but there are ways to stay connected without being glued to a screen. Um, and part of what the book is about, you know, Bailey Bloom and her two friends, they come up with this plan to decorate their neighborhood and drop off groceries for their neighbors. And a lot of what they're doing has nothing to do with being on a screen, but they're still feeling this connection to each other. And I think that that's so important right now. The name of the book is Bailey Bloom and the Battle of the Bug. Bailey Bloom and the Battle of the Blug, Bug. And it is uh, it was illustrated by Judy Elizabeth Wilson and written by Jill Rosenswag. Uh, and we have Jill on our phone line now. As we go into uh, a little bit of a break, I'm going to suggest that when we come back, we'll read a couple of pages of the book between Jill and myself, and we'll get you the, the feeling of this book. And at the same time, I want to come back and talk about being connected. Um, there's a tactile thing. Um, I'm in my studio in Thousand Oaks, for example. Daryl is in his studio in Ventura. And I haven't seen Daryl. I mean, I see him right now. But, and I, and, and it's a very pretty picture, I should say. But, <laughs> but, but, I miss sitting in the studio with him and kibitzing um, and chatting between segments even before and after because that's just part of, I guess, what I am as a social animal. Uh, this is Late Night Health. We're going to continue with Bailey Bloom and the Battle of the Bug as the Insane Daryl and I continue here on Late Night Health. Be sure to join us at LateNightHealth.com. That's LateNightHealth.com.
Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthear.com. Late Night Help is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Help with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents, or just have fun. Find out about the advertising opportunities with Late Night Health. Call us at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at latenighthealth.com. That's info at latenighthealth.com. Join Late Night Health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care. Call now at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308. There's a lot of talk all over the internet about the remarkable benefits of carbon-60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Greska's carbon-60 is the premium carbon-60, developed by an aerospace and NASA scientist. 95% of Greska's customers report positive results from this Nobel Prize-winning technology in just four days. Imagine more energy, better health, and more vitality. It's very bioavailable to quickly mend toxin cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his carbon-60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com. Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We're taking a look at a new book. It's called Bailey Bloom and the Battle of the Bug. And I promised that we would read a couple of pages from the book, just to give you a flavor. And I'll start, and then we'll have uh, Joe read a couple of pages as well. Here we go. This is Bailey Bloom and the Battle of the Bug. Deep in the valley, on a street with bungalows, played Bailey Bloom with Zoe and Rose. They would run in wide circles, games of tag all afternoon, but when their moms called dinner, they'd take off saying, see you soon. Each and every morning, they would reunite in class, desks beside each other, listening to Ms. Class. And now... Yeah, go ahead. sorry, I I jumped right in. All right, go ahead. Okay. At lunch, they'd play games of the superhero sort. Each of them had powers. Bailey chose to teleport. On Mondays, they'd save a princess. On Tuesdays, it was a king. 
On Wednesdays, they stop the bad guys from stealing a diamond ring. On Thursdays, they stop a fire from burning down a tower while flying on their unicorns, Twinkle, Spark, and Flower. That is so cute. So what class in law school, you went to Boston Law, um, taught you how to uh, write children's books? <laughs> I... Uh, not very much, although there was a lot of writing in law school. It was a very different type of writing. I did study English a lot in college, although I was a poli-sci major. But uh, honestly, I've been writing ever since I was little, and I've always wanted to write a children's book. I've been writing a novel for the past year, and the children's book really just came about because of what was going on with the pandemic and I had made a rainbow poster to put in my window with my kids and I saw how happy it made them feel that they realized that when people were out walking during the pandemic that if they looked at our window they could see this rainbow and it would make them feel better and in their minds they were helping people to combat COVID and so I wrote the book really to just give to my kids to show them how powerful their actions had been. And when I read it to them, and this was without illustrations or anything, it was just a Word document at the time, I saw how much they loved the book, and I just decided to go ahead and publish it. So this was really accidental, that's for sure. <laughs> a whole new career. And now you yeah. can start... And now, now, Joe, you could start telling, you know, lawyer jokes. Because yeah, oh gosh, I hope not. Um, but Bailey <laughs> Bloom, for me, the idea with this is that I'm hoping to make it into a series. And I think that at the heart of this, there are just a lot of topics that come up where I'll be talking to my mom friends, the mom crew, as I call them. And there are so many things that come up where we don't know necessarily the best way to address these things with our kids. And I, I think there really is no rule book when it comes to being a parent. And a lot of us are sort of guessing our way through it. And when it comes to topics that are a little tricky, that's kind of what I'm hoping to address by having a Bailey Bloom series, is each book will address a different topic that's a little bit tricky and challenging. One of the and things, hopefully it'll be sort of like this organic way of talking about these things with our kids. Got it. No, it makes sense to me. Uh, again, I want I'm I want the 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 old normal back. I don't think we're going to get yes. that for a long time, right? Um, I hope uh, we get there eventually. I mean, you know, and for now, I think the best thing to do is to just take it day by day and do the best that we can and give our kids that love and support that they need, um, you know, because nothing is normal and kids are definitely affected by it. And even if they're not talking about it, it they, they feel the difference for sure. Well, I know that you, you just said that, you know, kids really don't come with a, <laughs> a how-to manual, right? Uh, there are yes. many on parenting, but, uh, you know, as a, as a father of two myself, uh, you never know where, whether you're doing good, bad, or indifferently, and you don't know how the kids are taking it in. Even when they're right. adults, uh, you don't know. Uh, they tell you some things, but they don't, you know, they don't tell you everything. Right, what and especially with a pandemic, I think none of us know what we're doing. <laughs> so even any any book that you could possibly read would not prepare you for this. And I think all parents are just doing the best that they can right now. And I think kids are too. And, and with the, the idea behind this book is really to put your energy into helping other people. Because at least for me, my feeling has always been that when things are hard in my life, the best thing I can do for myself is to look outside myself and help other people. And that often I find is very healing. And I think it's healing for kids too. Uh, but honestly, it's all a bit of a guessing game right now with this whole thing. It's just so new and no one ever could have anticipated it and no one could have prepared for it. Uh, 
but I think we just have to do the best that we can and just really, again, you know, love our kids each day. That's really at the, at the heart of it. Uh, you also do a, a legal podcast called The Whole Truth with uh, Jill Rosenzweig. Uh, have, yes. you dis- have you discussed the handling of COVID in this country on that podcast? I have in certain respects. Um, not, I mean, I, I basically each week I talk about a different legal issue. So I've spoken about certain things that touch upon COVID, uh, but I don't. I don't sort of, I don't approach it from a political standpoint. And so, and the reason for that is because I want to invite anyone on any end of the political spectrum to listen to the podcast and listen to the facts. I mean, at the the heart of it is I wanted to have a podcast where facts are first and foremost, and whatever your personal views might be, you can take those facts and digest them and conclude whatever you will. And so I do touch upon certain things that have to do with as a pandemic, for sure. But what I do is I approach it from a very legal perspective. I tell people the law. I tell people the case precedent relating to certain things. And then they digest it however they will. All right. Well, we won't, I, won't, I won't press you on this, but um, lawyers don't necessarily have a good rap like you do of telling the <laughs> truth so uh now you know where i'm at i and i have many friends yeah, well, and who are part of who it are, is that i'm sort of shifting away from the actual practice of law and the i i still very much appreciate having a legal background but i think that one of the things that i feel about the law is that in a lot of ways it's not very accessible to normal people and I think that not knowing the law can put you at a disadvantage and an unfair advantage, honestly, for people that do know the law. And so the impetus for the podcast is really to make the law accessible to non-lawyers so that there are not things that I understand that other people don't. I want people to understand what's going on in the world and not feel excluded from that and not potentially be misleaded by headlines that can be a little bit deceiving at times. I know that um, I think a lot of courts throughout the country are telecourting right now. Um, yes. Right? It's it's fascinating uh, to me. Jill, I really appreciate your time today. I am looking for that smoke meat in the mail. Just put a lot of dry ice on it. And... Um, I encourage people to look for Bailey Bloom and the Battle of the Bug. I'm assuming this is on Amazon? Yes, it's on Amazon. All right. So go to Amazon, look up Bailey Bloom and the Battle of the Bug. Be sure to visit us at LateNightHealth.com. Lots going on over there. And uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Late Night Health Radio. And of course, you can go to LinkedIn. And at LinkedIn, go to LinkedIn slash Mark Allen, M A R K A L Y N. And uh, Daryl and I will return in just a couple of moments as Late Night Health continues. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servet Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servet at Servet at Servet Hassan.com. 